Thanks for stopping by. Uh, what better on a cold Chicago winter's day than spending a little practice time with Adobe Illustrator. Today we're going to look at recreating the Paul Rand UCLA extension poster. We'll look at some drawing with the pencil and pen tools. We'll look at the type tool and a little bit about typesetting. We'll also use the eyedropper to sample some color. Uh, we'll layer some objects in space and we'll finish off by dropping in a couple backgrounds and ensuring you know how to properly save PDFs as small as file size so that you can digitally transmit them. All right, into Illustrator, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to try to move as fast as possible. Uh, you are watching a video, so. If you get a little behind or you miss something because I'm moving a little fast, uh, just scrub back a little and uh, get yourself caught up. All right, uh, we're gonna use the letter size artboard. We only need one of those. Uh, make sure you're in uh, print color space, so you should be looking at CMYK color mode at 300 resolution. We don't need to adjust any of the other settings in here. Uh, first thing, I'm going to fit my artboard in window. Uh, Command-0 minus plus are your best friends for navigating uh, in and out in your viewport area. Uh, I am set to the Essentials Classic workspace, and as much as possible, I'm going to try to work only through the Properties panel today for a change. As we know, uh, best practice for getting an image into Illustrator is to go to File, Place. Uh, I'm gonna grab the PRAND UCLA extension JPEG. Illustrator is showing me a thumbnail of the image it's going to place next to my pointer. I'm just gonna click and release on the artboard. Uh, I do have my align tools up here up top. I'm gonna leave that image selected. I'm going to make sure that I'm on aligned artboard and I'm going to center center in the layers panel uh, this is going to be Paul's poster we're going to name this layer we're going to go ahead and lock it we're going to create a new layer above uh, this is going to be our poster all right and this is the same process you will use to work over your own drawings uh, when you are recreating your own artwork as vector graphics. What I like to do in a situation like this is get everything outlined with just strokes. So we're gonna do all the drawing, then we're gonna set the type, uh, then we'll sample out colors, get everything filled, and then at the very end, we're gonna put in the backgrounds. Uh, so let's get started. I am also going to uh, draw these objects onto the artboard in the order they need to be in space. So whenever you add a new object, it will be layered above any objects that already exist on the board. So right now, farthest back for us is the orange. Uh, then we'll do the white frosting or snow. Uh, this is a winter poster. Uh, all right, so we're gonna start with the pencil tool because all three of those shapes are organic shapes. The pencil tool works uh, just like freehand drawing. What you wanna do first to make sure your pencil is set up the way you would like if you double click on the icon, it'll bring up the pencil tool icons. And this top slider right here is really the only thing you want to adjust, especially when you're first getting started. Um, this fidelity setting is how much Illustrator will smooth out your lines for you if you're cranked all the way to the right. If you're all the way to the left, it'll catch every last janky twitch that you make while you're drawing. All right. Uh, generally, I work somewhere in the middle. These are fairly smooth shapes, so I'm gonna go uh, one click from the end all the way to smooth here. All right, so Illustrator is showing my pencil tool. Uh, I'm just gonna hop 
out here over in the extra workspace area. Uh, I'm going to turn off my fill color and I'm going to put a, let's go fuchsia, so hot pink, 100% magenta, so we can see what we're drawing. And then you can see I'm just clicking and dragging and scribbling around over here. When I actually let go, there are there is the single stroke that I just drew. One very nice feature of the pen tool is that you can go back and draw over your lines and Illustrator will readjust to your new lines as long as the line that you are trying to adjust is still selected so you should be able to see the anchor points on there uh, but you can go pretty much anywhere over the line and illustrator will make the adjustment make sure you're starting directly on the line and then adjust as you're drawing and try to finish back on your line again and you'll see that illustrator will adjust for you all right uh, back to fit and window I'm gonna work a little farther zoomed out um, I do draw with the trackpad and even with the mouse when you're just getting started the less distance you have to travel when you're trying to draw lines uh, more than likely the more successful you're gonna be uh, so unless you're working on super fine detail, which none of this really is, these are pretty easy, good beginner shapes. All right. You will notice when I get back to where I started, the pencil will show me a small circle to the bottom right of my pencil indicator where I am drawing. And that means that illustrator is going to close this shape for me. Uh, whenever you are drawing, you absolutely want to make sure that you are closing your shapes. All right, so I have a finished shape here. I just clicked over to the selection tool, that's V on the keyboard, and I'm going to go ahead and non-proportionally uh, pull my bounding box a little uh, just to get my lines to line up on the edge of that orange. Okay, there's our orange. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop in our little bit of snow here. Uh, if you're a sweets person, maybe you can think of it as frosting. Uh, again, make sure that you are closing your shapes. Um, so what I'm seeing here, I missed just a little bit on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw just around those areas and let it... Illustrator adjust my strokes for me. Um, we do want to get accurate, even though we are going to move through here pretty quickly uh, with how simple this artwork is. We really shouldn't have a lot of trouble moving through here fairly fast, right? Paul Rand, very much. Uh, you want to make sure you click off in between drawing, otherwise Illustrator will try and join your paths, and we are certainly not trying to combine these things. We need separate objects. All right, so I'm just tracing around the snow on the leaf up here. I see my little circle, so I know it's gonna close. Uh, I got really close, so I'm just gonna adjust this curve at the bottom a little. Boom, there it is. All right, another thing you can do when you finish drawing, if you really want to fine tune, uh, if you hop over to your direct selection tool, that would be A on the keyboard, you can select your path and you can adjust individual anchor points. Uh, if I had a different layer color here, I could actually see my anchor points against my stroke. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that yellow. And now I can see my anchor points. Uh, red layer with a magenta stroke means you can't see any of your anchor points. All right, so I'm just dragging my points out. Maybe over here I actually wanna adjust the handlebars to adjust the curve behind there. That looks pretty good. All right, while we're in here, way down, 
let's take a look at the pen tool really fast. All right, pen tool. In this situation here, I'm seeing square corners on the leaf, which I'm gonna draw first, and then the stem of the orange, which I'm gonna draw next. So this works to the advantage of the pen tool, and it's the easiest way to draw with pen tool also. Uh, you just click and move, and the pen tool will drop straight lines and sharp angles. I'm just watching behind me to make sure that those strokes end up in the right place. All right, I just clicked off in between and I'm just gonna work my way around this stem. All right, when we get to the end, that leaf over there is gonna be on top of that smaller little bit of snow that we started with, uh, but I will show you how to arrange those. Outside of the layers palette, uh, you will notice, except for, no, we are only gonna use one layer for all of this. And I'm gonna show you a little more of my process where I actually organize uh, in space right on the artboard. Uh, once you know where everything is, it's very easy uh, to work that way. And something that has fairly simple artwork like this does, I'm not so inclined to make my file any more complex than it really needs to be. Uh, and I think for our purposes here today, uh, that this will work just fine. Let me show you one more thing. Uh, I have the direct selection tool. I'm hovering between two anchor points. Illustrator is showing a rounded double-headed arrow uh, to the bottom right of my pointer. I can actually click on that stroke in between those two anchor points and I can pull either direction and it will also let me drag to adjust that curve. Uh, so a combination of working with a pencil tool, being able to redraw over the, over the lines you have just drawn, adjusting anchor points, pulling handlebars, and also, if need be, uh, dragging directly on the lines that you have drawn to adjust that curvature. All right, I'm going to do that one more time right here at the top. Uh, we aren't going to see this part. It's going to be hidden, so I'm not too absolutely worried about exactly what that top looks like up there. Uh, I could have gone straight across if I wanted to. All right, so here's where we are right now. I can flip off the poster underneath. We can see our outlines for our orange and the other shapes in here. All right, type tool. So giant capital T, just like it is in uh, every other program in the world, right? All right, in Illustrator, you have options. You can click directly somewhere on the artboard. Illustrator will give you a straight insertion point for text, and then you can start typing. Uh, everything will stay in one line unless you hit a soft return, which is just a line break, that's shift enter on the keyboard. Or if you're typing and you actually want a paragraph break, you're gonna hit return, which is a hard return or paragraph break on the keyboard, all right? And that looks like this. Uh, back to the selection tool, sorry, hit the tab key. Uh, back to the selection tool. I'm going to select this type. Let me move it up here so we can see it. I'm going to change the fill color to something we can see. Since I did a straight insertion point, if I now click and drag on the bounding box here, skewed, stretched, squished type. So please don't do that, right? Uh, you could set the type that we're going to set right here with a straight insertion point like that. Uh, we instead are actually gonna drag a text box. And what I would like you to see is that when you 
actually draw a text box and this would be most appropriate when you have paragraphs of text so part of a report um, or long answers to questions uh, you have the ability to readjust the size of that bounding box and your text will flow within that box one more thing that we want to do because we're not going to use uh, extra paragraph breaks or hard returns to make the extra spacing in the text here on this poster. We're actually going to set it as space after in a paragraph uh, the way that you are supposed to when you are typesetting. So under the type menu we want to turn on show hidden characters and what you're going to see that added in here not only all of the spaces between words because when you hit the space bar, that actually is a character. Uh, the computer is holding some math for that. So these are the small little dots in between all the words. Uh, we can see the, let me go ahead and make this like a medium gray. There we go. Uh, we can see the hard return right here that is a full paragraph break. And if I wanted to, if I just wanted to make a line break or insert a soft return, I can do that by hitting shift enter. The symbol you will see is the capital L on its side. All right, I'm gonna go back um, kind of top level here to my selection tool and just select this box, the whole box. And what I want to show you is, so over here in the properties panel, I'm going to go down to where it says character. And I'm not going to change the font right now, but so we have uh, number one on the left here is the point size of the font. So how big the font itself is. Directly to the right is the letting. That is your space between individual lines so the bigger that I make that we can see that it is spacing out my lines of text all right if I go just below here to the paragraph panel and I hit the more options button here and it actually opens up the paragraph panel what I would like you to notice is the difference between putting space after a paragraph for spacing as opposed to this soft return right here that is just making a line break, there's no extra added space there, right? But we have all this added, uh, whatever that amount was, I set 24 points worth of space additionally between our paragraphs, between our hard returns where we hit enter. All right, so let's set the type on this poster. I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, I'm gonna come back up here to fit artboard in window. Uh, I'm gonna draw myself a text box. I'm gonna make it plenty bigger, bigger than what I need. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start typing. So I have UCLA and then I need a line break. So I'm gonna hit soft return or shift enter extension now here this is going to act like a paragraph break so i need a hard return enter on the keyboard you can see the big p right there uh, winter soft return shift enter quarter oh just like us all right Paragraph breaks, so hard return, enter, begins, line break, soft return, shift enter, January 6, line break, soft return, shift enter, 1990. All right, back to the selection tool. Let's move this over the artboard. Let's go ahead and make it white for the time being. We're actually gonna spec a light ivory color for this when we start sampling color, but for now white is good so we can see what we're doing while we're adjusting this text. 
All right, back to the properties panel on the right hand side, down to the character section. Uh, I am going to use, because it's as close as I have for this type, uh, Bedoni 72 old style. That works for me. If you do not have Bodoni available to you, Baskerville is the next closest option, right? It is the book or regular weight that we are looking for. Uh, I'm just going to start hitting the arrows for the point size until I see that and if I move this down a little so my baselines match until I see that my UCLA, I'm looking at that height of my capitals, that that matches what's on the poster. And I got it right there. So we are 26. And for line spacing, I'm just visually, again, I'm just visually matching to the way the poster is typeset. Uh, if I want, I can line up my baselines, and there it is right there. So 25. So this setting is Bedoni book for the weight, 26 point with 25 point letting. All right, now let's adjust our space after for our paragraphs. Again, in the paragraph section, directly down below, we're going to hit the show options. I'm still on 24. Uh, from showing you how that worked. You, when you open it up, might be set to zero. Again, the space after is the one down here in the bottom right corner where the arrow is pointing at the empty rectangle after the paragraph. All right, so I'm just gonna use my arrow key up and I'm gonna watch for my baselines to align. And I can see that now I have my paragraph spacing set correctly. I have my line spacing or letting dialed in to what it should be and the point size of my type looks really good. All right, let's put this over where it goes. I also like to, oh, last thing, the pound symbol, not the hashtag, the pound symbol. You should see that directly after the end of your typing. There shouldn't be an extra space there. There shouldn't be five hard returns or paragraph breaks after that. After, directly after the last character, you should be seeing the pound symbol. If you aren't, you need to take some stuff out of your text box. All right, so I'm gonna line this up exactly where it goes. Uh, we're pretty close. There's probably a little spacing in there that isn't exact and also that the poster isn't actually set in the Bedoni that I'm using. And as you get more familiar with type, you will learn that different type sets different sizes and has different kerning or letter spacing. Uh, even at the same point size. It really depends on how that typeface, or in this case, a font, was designed. All right, so I'm just gonna pull up my bounty box. Not so far that it shows the little red outline box with the red plus sign, meaning there's more information inside of that text box than what Illustrator can currently display. So I'm gonna pull that out so that my line breaks look correct and just that I'm close just so I don't have a ton of extra space hanging out up there I'm gonna arrow key this down and over just to be a little fussy about it all right there's the type let's look at the eyedropper and uh, get these colors sampled out of here and get our palette built over here on this side so I just grabbed the rectangle tool, that's M on the keyboard. I'm gonna go back to the selection tool, that's V on the keyboard. I'm gonna alt drag while holding shift, a copy of this triangle. We need one, counting the white, two, the brown, three, the orange, four, the green. So we need four of these. 
So what I just did, and my shortcut will be different than yours, but what I just did was object transform transform again. Uh, whenever you make a move, especially when you're copying objects and dropping them a certain amount of space away, if you leave that copy selected and go to object transform transform again, it'll do the same operation again for you. So that's a really fast way to copy objects and space and lay them out the way that you want. All right. This white at the top, we're going to dial into our cream. I'm going to open up my swatches palette, double click on the fill color to get the color picker. Uh, I like to go down here into a really burnt orange. And that lets me spec. I'm looking at my current verse, current color on the bottom versus what it's showing on the top. I want just a little more color in there. Uh, that's a nice little ivory cream. All right, I'm going to select my next rectangle. I'm going to activate the eyedropper tool. It's over here on the left side of the toolbar, about two thirds down. The keyboard shortcut is the letter I for eyedropper. All right, and then I'm just going to click inside of the orange to sample this color. Notice as I'm clicking around, the color is changing slightly that I'm sampling. All right, that is because this is an image of this poster, right? So that means it's raster artwork or way underneath here. If we zoom way, way, way in, let me get back over on the poster. It's pixels under there, right? And look, there's a variation in the colors. If I was sampling way out here, I'd have a much lighter orange. There's some darker, a little more brownie burnts. And then you'll see some big areas of a pretty decent orange right there, which is what I'm gonna grab, all right? So that's why the eyedropper is showing different colors as you continue to click around. So what I generally do, and I use this process for developing color palettes for projects that I'm working on very often, uh, I just click around until I see a color that is more to my liking. Okay, there's my green. Uh, let's get this brown out of the back. I'm going to try to get something that's a little lighter uh, and reads a little more washed out, kind of like the palette uh, that we have started here. Let's go ahead and put one more rectangle in here that is the actual background um, just like that and it picked up that brown because it was the last color that I sampled uh, what we can do now is we need to send this background rectangle all the way to the back of all the artwork that's on this layer Yes, you can do this through the layers panel. I wanna show you how to do it visually on the artboard. So instead of sending backward, which should just be one level, uh, which didn't look like anything, because remember, the last four things we drew on here were these rectangles off to the side that aren't blocked by anything. But if I send two back, it goes all the way to the bottom or all the way farthest away from us in space at the very, very end of the stacking order. All right, I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool again. I'm gonna click just within the workspace to bring up the rectangle dialog. What I actually want here is a letter size or eight and a half by 11 rectangle that I'm gonna Hit I on the keyboard to grab the eyedropper, sample that nice cream color fill in there. I'm gonna hit center, center with my align tools because I'm still set to align to artboard, right? And now I'm gonna send this object arrange, send two back at the very bottom of the stacking order. Check it out we're almost there all right 
If I go ahead and turn off my hidden characters underneath my type menu, all of that will disappear. We can select the type with the selection tool, hit the eyedropper, I on the keyboard, that'll sample that cream color in there. Uh, let's see how we did with stacking here with our drawn objects. So I just sample in my orange to my orange. I'm gonna grab both of my little snow covers at the same time and sample in that cream color we spec'd. And then here's our stem and leaf and we only got one to fix all right the leaf is actually in front of the snow there but if i grab this little snow shape and then i do object arrange and i can bring this all the way to the front so the very top of the stacking order bring to front and voila recreation of a wonderfully beautiful, simple, modern Paul Rand poster. All right, as always, file save as. Make sure you save a native Illustrator file. For me, this is gonna be Paul Rand demo. All right, just hit okay through those secondary dialog boxes. And then I'm gonna do file save as again. We're gonna save this as a PDF with the intention of it having to travel through email or across the internet. So that means when we hit save and the secondary save Adobe PDF dialog box comes up, we wanna use the smallest file size preset. Make sure optimize for fast web view is checked and leave the view PDF after saving checked. You always want to Double check your work before you send it off to someone else, right? Uh, if you are not using Acrobat DC, please download the Acrobat DC app and start using it. It is very powerful and extremely helpful. All right, that is what I have for you. I kind of hit my time goal, half an hour, that's not bad. All right, enjoy, get some practice. Uh, Put some good music on, get all nice and cozy, and have some fun with Illustrator.